The Common Music Show. Woo! There was a lot in stride. Live music sections. Like Sharky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Goosebumps. Oh, you know. Little Birdie told me you was in the Karma Music Studio. Wanna play I think we've got a massive amount of talent here. All around Central Australia. Sounds deadly. Boom. 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 That's us on Karma. Hello and welcome back to the Karma Music Show. This week we have Paul Archie here in the Karma Music Studio to play us some songs. Now, Paul Achi is an Alice Springs local. He is of Aboriginal, Chinese and European ancestry. Paul's journey has been through the fields of sports, business and music, with a strong sense of community and family. He is a founding member of the NT Aboriginal Tourism Advisory Council. Paul's contribution to the tourism sector was recognised with a NT Chief Minister's Award for Excellence in 2009, and in recognition for his contribution to the Indigenous community, received the Centenary Medal in 2003. We'll have a listen to Paul's tracks a bit later, but first, let's see him having a chat with Charlotte. Hey, what are you, mob? This is another week here on the Karma Music Show, and we have the one and only Uncle Paul Archie in the building. How you going, Uncle? Oh, yeah, pretty good. Thanks, Charlotte. Yeah, you don't mind if I call you Uncle? No, nah, you're fine. Deadly, it's a deadly. Term, terms of endearment. That's it. That's right. Yes, and I appreciate you, not just me, but everyone here at Karma for coming in and giving us your goodness. Because I tell you what, that was the first time I've seen you perform. Oh, right. There yeah. you go. Yeah. First and time I, for everything. Um, just watching you and being there in the studio was, um, I'd say, probably one of the most captivating times I have seen people in there, or in general, really. Wow. Yeah. You're, re- you're like, you're really good. Coming from you, I think uh, that is certainly a compliment. But, you know, like, I think that's, um, it's always good to actually share experiences and, and uh, sit down and watch other performers. Mm. Because we all learn from each other, right? You know, yeah. I think that's what's really important. Yeah, that's what I got from that session is like a, a new type of like lesson, Good. essentially. Yeah, watching you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll talk more of that. But right now, so you did four songs for us. And the first one, Morning Star, I tell you what, that, that picking is pretty deadly on that one. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you know, um, it's basically playing open strings, you know, and up the neck. Mm -hmm. So really they are chords like A and D, but it's the way that you configure them. Yeah. Which I think gives you that um, interesting sound. Yeah. And then it's how you pick um, your strings in between. So, yeah, and and each muse will try and find their own Mm -hmm. way of expression. Yeah. And for me that's my um, way of as a guitar player to express myself, yeah, so. Yep. And is is Morningstar, is it? One of your older songs or is it a new one? No, I wrote that song in 2023. Hey, last year? Yeah, last year, yeah. Hey. Released it. um, Yeah, and basically um, what it is, it's a follow-up from my EP that I released called Nowhere to Hide, which I did just before COVID hit. And um, what I try to do now is release a new song every sort of six months. So after that, I followed up with a song that we'll listen to later on too called... Um, Is that Light the Fire? Light the Fire, yes, exactly. Yeah, Light the Fire. Yeah, yeah, so that was followed. Then I've got a new song and that I'm releasing in about two weeks' time called um, Sign of the Times, which, um, which yeah, I'm pretty happy about Sign of the Times because it's progressive, you know? Yes. You're yeah, progressively yeah. thinking, you're following something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're following it and you're trying to find it, you know, and... And um, maybe sometimes you've already found it, you know, Mm -hmm. but then you're looking just to um, refine it, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we we can't wait to hear Sign of the Times and it just popped a, you know, I had one of those intrusive thoughts kind of as in with time, how has your playing or songwriting progressed? Oh, enormously. I think, um, you know, there's a saying that if you spend more than 10,000 hours on anything, um, you're going to be reasonably proficient at it, you know. Yeah. So who said that? I um, heard that, that before. Actually, yeah, and um, somebody did tell me it's a it's a really well known um, philosopher or academic. You know, he just basically said because you know, like you spend ten thousand hours makes sense. Mm. You spend ten thousand hours playing golf, you're going to be a reasonable golfer. 
Yeah, yeah. You, know? <laughs> you and golf. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I love golf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're going to be 10,000 hours playing guitar. You're going to be mm-hmm. reasonably proficient at it, you know? Yep. Um, so, but I think the, the point there is that you've got to stick at it. Yes. And you've got to put the time in. That's it, yeah. Um, so, um, and it is, you know, like that Brian Adams song, you know, uh, a year of 69, you know, when I play guitar, 69. summer of 69, mm-hmm. when I play guitar till my fingers bled. Well, that's literal, you know. Yeah. That's oh, what yeah. you've got to do, you know, if you want to be a good guitar player, yeah. Yeah, and that, that should be um, said in the first session with an aspiring guitarist. <laughs> Most certainly. Yeah. Most certainly, you know, like, and you just got to do your time. And like you said, you know, over a period of time, you just progressively get better because mm-hmm. you're learning and um, you're sort of figuring things out and you go, oh, that, you know, that's probably better if I do this or play this, you know, this sort of structure in terms of the chord rather than playing the old traditional chords, you know, over D, yeah. you do it, you know, in a, in a different format. Um, but yeah, and, and I continue to learn too, you know, from other guitar players, you watch them and you go, wow, that's an interesting way of doing a G mm-hmm. or a... C or F sharp minor or whatever, you know, they're all the same chord. It's yeah. just different ways that people are actually expressing it, which mm-hmm. I think is interesting. Yeah, well, we'll get back to this. But first, let's uh, hear this first song, eh? Morning Star. Mother danced all through the night as the star fell from the sky. Father is the morning star Venus shines so bright For you and I As we fell from the sky Into the night Burn it so bright Well it seems like a million Go kiss the sky like a shooting star Rising up to the southern cross You know as Venus shines so bright Okay, everyone, that was Morning Star. And if you've just joined, we've got Uncle Paul Archie here in the building. And this next song that we're going to talk about, which was, has been your kind of most recent, Light the Fire? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, give us a story. Yeah, well, um, 
you know, all these songs are also on Spotify. So if you want to get them on Spotify or Apple Music mm. or whatever nice platform you want. Nice little plug there. Yeah, you, can, you can always listen to them. And plus, Karma play them too, you know, which is good. Um, you know, Light the Fire is a song that I wrote in response prior to the decision made around the referendum. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's all the discussion around, you know, um, we're the same, you know. Don't you blame, you know, no matter. And then I sort of, when it happened, well, I, actually the song was written before the result. Oh, uh, yeah. And actually, it, it was um, Congress's 50th anniversary and Karma were there doing the live broadcast. I couldn't sing it. I couldn't sing that song. I, was I it too emotional for yeah, you? Yeah, it was too emotional because, yeah. you know, because of what happened. But I think music is a good therapy, you know, in terms of you're allowed to express yourself, you're allowed yeah. to sort of say what you want to say yeah. and music softens it, you know, mm-hmm. but you can still have something strong to say in that. So yeah. lyrical content is always big, you know, for me and for most uh, songwriters, I yeah. think, you know, it's that lyrical content. Yeah. So, so Light the Fire is just about that really. It's about, you know, keeping that fire alight and, you know, and if anything, the fire has been relit, you know, yeah. in a different sense. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah, in a different sense. Yeah. I get that because um, when leading up to the result, I was a bit ambivalent about it and then when the result came out, I was actually quite sad mm. that I had this like realisation that even more so that we're not equal and it was very sad and then correct me if I'm wrong but in this song you're talking about working twice as hard like just to, you know, get noticed, yeah. be equal. Yeah, is, you know, yeah, and I've got a line in there saying, you know, I can't understand the reasons why yeah. he found it hard, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, yeah, it's 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 something that I think should be, you know, should be quite easy, you know, because yeah. we're all human beings and we all live in the same space. We all breathe the same air and uh, I think that, um, you know, it's about – anyway, like it's a song that, um, you know, I felt good about writing it now. I can play it live now. Yeah. You know, um, and I like hearing it on the radio and I, I got it on my own playlist, you know, I like listening to myself. <laughs> Here you go. No, but it's all good, you know. Yeah. Well, I tell you, yeah, but like in regards to listening to yourself, when you first started, did, did you cringe at it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think when you first start, you know, because you're on the beginning of your journey, you know, and it's like anything in life, you know. But as a musician, you're putting – you're putting it out there, you mm. know, and you're exposing yourself and, mm. and, and, and you're allowing yourself for criticism, mm-hmm. uh, allowing yourself for adulation too, but you hope your adulation outweighs the criticism. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's where you've got to work hard to actually win them over, you know. And, yeah. and, but, you know, like when you perform too, you've got to really put your heart and soul into it. Mm-hmm. You've got to believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah, once you start believing what you're doing, it becomes a lot easier. Well, that's it. And, and you, you, it's not as if you're trying to portray it. You just do it naturally that, um, yeah, I just, I felt like everyone kind of just stopped and was listening and was um, immersed into your sound, your music, your lyrics and, yeah, and your emotions with it. You're very captivating to watch. Yeah, you know, like, and you're, you're a performer yourself, you know, and um, you capture that too because you have to, you know, you have to be convincing mm. um, yeah. and when you do sing something that you believe in it that you want to share, you know, you want to present it in the way that you want to present it mm-hmm. and you feel good about it, you know. Yeah. yeah. I think that's it, you know. I just got to be feel good about what you're You got to feel good about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Feeling good. That's it. Um, when, you, when you get lost in the song, so much easier to play. And yeah. So, yeah, and then you realise, oh, okay, and kind of open your eyes and, you know, you're, there's a crowd there in front yeah. of you. <laughs> yeah. And True. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you do it really well. So let's get straight to this next song. This is Light the Fire and this is your most recent song and it is about the referendum essentially, yeah? Yep. All right, here we go.
we are back and that was Light the Fire with Paul Archie here in the Karma Studio. So this next song, well, we just spoke about how you would play songs and you'd, mm-hmm. you'd get criticised that you'd play half a song. This song, I wish it went longer. It was nice and cheeky and it was a bluesy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this, this one. Um, when we just left the studio and asked what tuning you had it in because yeah. I, I had this idea that it being tuned in D mm-hmm. would make it sound more ominous mm-hmm. and it would just like kind of bring out mm-hmm. that the blues type of um, story more. Sent, for me, that's what I heard. But, yeah, so this is Love's Gonna Get Ya. What's this one about? Yeah, well, you know, like uh, just hearing you talk now, we discussed it off offline and um, – yeah, I'm going to take you to uh, New Orleans when we go so we can play it together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I like that idea, you know. I think when you play songs and somebody like like yourself, you come up and said, you know, tuning it in D and then playing it would give it a nice feel. So maybe we should try that one day live, you know. But Love's Gonna Get You, you know, it's a song that I wrote um, um, and it was just something that I wanted to get back to more of that bluesy rock mm. type feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I sort of listened to a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah. You know, so I was thinking, oh, you know. So when, I, when, I'm, when I'm writing something, I'll sort of channel into a particular artist. Yeah. You know, um, so, and then I try and listen to that feel. Like Morningstar, I listened a lot to The Cure to get yeah. that song in, to get that melody line in there. Mm-hmm. You can hear the melody line. So that's The Cure, you know, basically. So this one here, yeah, that's, um, yeah, so listening to Steve Ruey Vaughan. But, you know, I've got my own blues style too. Yeah. You know, and then, um, yeah, so I just thought, oh, and i got to write a song that's not about politics or about anything else other than love. Yeah. I don't write too many love songs, so I can't. <laughs> you know, I try, but I'm not very good at it, you know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it's not really a love song, but it's about, you know, about the end of the day, love's going to get everyone, isn't it, really? Yeah, that's right. It, I found it a bit cheeky. like in Did a, you? Yeah, like it's a fun song. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's meant to be, yeah. Yeah, it's... um. And the chords you were playing, yep, they look quite simple, and just the way you're strumming, like the, the blues. But then yeah. how you finish the song as yes. well, yes. Uh, in in such a blues sound where it's yes. just unorthodox. Yes, that was cool. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just reading a book um, on the plane yesterday, coming back, and um, Slash was talking about it. he's just going to release a, a, a blues album Ooh. and based on all of his blues heroes, you know, and he was talking about. You know, the blues and, and how the blues, um, while people might think it's really uh, simple, but it's not, it's quite complex. Mm-hmm. You know, man, you've got to make everything count. Yeah. Um, and it's got to make sense, you know. Yep. So, um, um, but a single note can hold its own and that's the beauty of blues. So I think that's, yeah, that's where that love's going to get you. It's just, and I had that song, I've had that sort of, you know, riff for a while, mm-hmm. you know, and I just thought. I've got to put it together in a song. So yeah. it sort of fell together pretty well. I've got another um, another blues track that I'll probably do somewhere down the track, which I used um, um, Buddy Knox played uh, guitar on it. Yeah, And Buddy he's Knox. like the preeminent, he's like the preeminent uh, Aboriginal blues player in Australia. Mm-hmm. He's really well respected. Where's, um, where's Buddy from? He's from New South Wales. He's from um, around Moree Way. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, and he's, he's, um, his father, Roger Knox, is country music. Legend. Do you know where Buddy lives now? I think I've got an idea who it is. Yeah, um, I think he lives in. Oh, either, I think he might live in Sydney. Okay. Or could be up. Could be up in up in in his home country. You know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but he's a he's an amazing guitar player. He goes to New Orleans. I mean, he plays everywhere. Have he's, you been to New Orleans? No, but I'm going. That's why I wrote. I'm going to get a, a whole lot of blues songs that I want to do that I can play. Because oh. I've got a band over there waiting for me to get to, to New Orleans. Yeah. The drummer that plays on all my new tracks, he said he'll put a band together for me. So I'm looking forward to that. But I'll go after the election. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, be sure to catch up and see how that trip goes. Because, yeah. yeah, there's something uh, I think very luring, uh, alluring about. New Orleans and then the the stories that come out of there and the yeah. music and, yeah, yeah, like all the, you know, old-time like voodoo and everything. So it's a Correct. quite, it seems like quite a magical place. I'll probably come back with a whole heap of songs too yeah. you know, that I'm writing, you know. So, yeah. so I think it's all part of your musical journey. Wow. And music is like a passport, you know. You can go travel the world with yeah. music. Yeah. Now we're going to play this little blues number. This is Love's Gonna Get Ya. Little, 
Yes, I hope you like that track. That was Love's Gonna Get You, a nice little blues one there from Uncle Paul Archie, who is here in the studio on the Karma show. And, yes, that's right, the next song is Civilised World. This one, what's this one about? Yeah, I wrote the song in 1990. It was um, it was uh, when the um, coalition, which was the UK, Australia and the USA, decided to go and invade Iraq. Mm. You know, um, and it was the first time that the coalition, you know, em- embarked upon that. And it was about regime change and um, – but I think it was more about the oil. Yeah. More about all of the economics that would come out of it. Um, and I remember we are on the road then with Amanda and we were just sort of writing new songs for the new album called Civilised World, which, which is the album that's named after oh, that wow. song. Yeah. And um, I saw this um, – news clipping of this American sailor that were harboured in at um, Fremantle. And the lyric is, you know, so we travelled from Sydney to Fremantle town on, a sh- on board a ship called Adelaide, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he jumped aboard, overboard because he watched and he saw um, George Bush um, senior playing golf, you know, and he was going over to the golf and he couldn't understand, well, if he's playing golf and I'm going to golf fight this war that I don't yeah. know about, and he jumped overboard. And, and wow. um, so that was interesting and... And in the lyric, I say, 20 years from now, it could be hell, you know, and yep. and it's more than 20 years now because 1990, so 20 years, and it is hell, yeah. you know, for people living in the Middle East, you know. Oh, definitely. It's, it's, it's sad. It's sad. It's, yeah, and yeah. look what's it's happening in, in um, the Gaza now, and it's all stemmed from all of that. Yeah. And it's, know? yeah, and it's cra- like 1990, I was one then. Yeah. And then to think, like, the opening lyrics yeah. is, you know, the Sydney yeah. and boarding the ship called Adelaide, like, yeah, yeah that... And then to hear the story behind this song, Civilised World, yeah. that's that's quite um, shocking well, to yeah. hear. Yeah, well, I question, you know, is a civilised world a yeah. place for me, you know? Yep, and then you, like you wrote it then, 1990, yeah. Yeah. and like you said, stated there's 20 years yes. from now, it's going to be hell. It It's quite apparent that, yeah, that it's, um, how do I say it, like the, the, the Middle East is just... Oh, it's no, no man's own yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Imagine the people living there, you know, like you were one. Yeah. Imagine how many one-year-olds survived. Yeah, that's you know? it. Um, and, you know, like the um, best thing about being a songwriter, you know, you can write songs that impact on what your thoughts are, you know, mm-hmm. and, 
And, you know, while we're just a, you know, black fella band based in Central Australia, you know, we released a song called Civilised World. It didn't reach, you know, the broader audience at all. You know, that doesn't matter, you know. What does matter is that we were allowed to, in our own minds, release that song. Yeah. You know, and it means so much, you know, to sort of talk about how we feel about, you know, about war. Yeah. You know? Not a great supporter of war. No, no. You're, yeah, and um, I listened to this, I didn't... I thought it was more so about your time growing up as a young fella, but now that you speak about the story behind it, yeah, it does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. in the live version, I missed out a couple of verses there because I just sort of, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's a quite a lengthy song, but, um, but you know, it's, uh, it's, I, I really like performing that live and I've, it's a, it was sort of more of a country rock song. Okay. So it's played with a band, oh. but I really like doing it in this, in this version of acoustic version. This is very it's, 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 it's This is cut, very nice. It's cut right back. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's more like intimate. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, the, your, your whole sound in there just yeah. with you and the acoustic, the Madden, which yeah. is an awesome guitar, sounds yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You know, your, your sound is quite intimate and the way you play, you know, it demands attention and for people to just sit and listen. No, thank you. And so, look, that, that's, I think that's where I'm at right now. I like that intimacy. I like, I'd much rather play in a room of 50 people mm. and with acoustic guitar, but with a really good sound system. Yeah. And just let them hear the guitar and the vocals, the lyrics, and just, and just sing to them, you know? Yeah. Which I'm doing a gig in Edithburg, um, which will be a bit like that um, in November, which I'm really looking forward to. Whoa. Just got to be a small and little pub, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I, I really like those um, shows. But then again, you can't beat being on stage with big amplifiers. It's <laughs> crazy. It's, it's yeah. Different. But, yeah, anyway, look, and that's the beauty of playing music. So if any muso out there, anyone thinking about playing music, please get involved. It's it's good for you. It's mm-hmm. it's good for your well-being. It's good for, you know, you to share with your family and friends and, and others. And who knows, you know, um, it could um, provide you a lifestyle. Yeah, but... We'll we'll finish it off here because this was a pretty deadly show and you have another meeting to go to because you're a busy man. So thank you. We really appreciate you coming into the Karma Studios and being on the Karma Music Show. Yeah, thanks, Shiloh, and and thanks to everybody at uh, Karma Studios and, um, yeah, really enjoyed it. Boom. Kalamara. Well, we traveled from Sydney to Fremantle town on board a ship called Adelaide. Mama cried, oh my son, come back someday. So we sailed out to sea while the powers that be drove that three iron off the tee. Don't know why, oh why we have to go and fight. Civilized world ain't no place for a man like me. Oh, spend a lifetime pleasing society. Down if I can understand this world, oh, my yeah. Twenty years from now, it is to be held. So we're stuck in the gulf of this faraway land Hot sun beats down on me I can't hide all of my anxiety So when the president's man, you know, and his ministers to Say hey, no to hostility I see my, oh my, that hypocrisy Well, civilized world ain't no place for a man like me. Oh, spend a lifetime pleasing society. Doubt if I can understand this world. Say
out the old common music I found. From the archives. Yes, that's right. It's from the archives where we here at Karma dig through our old common music library and find some tracks that may have flown under your radar or that you haven't heard in a while. This week on From the Archives we've got a bunch of different genres coming your way, so stay tuned. First up we've got Warren H. William with his song Sunburnt Country. Warren was born in the remote community of Hermansburg about 120 k's west of Alice Springs. And in 2006, he was named NADOC Artist of the Year and the NT Indigenous Music Award presented him most popular song in 2005. Warren was also the 2012 Red Ochre Award winner at the National Indigenous Arts Award and has been inducted into the Hands of Fame at Tamworth. Sunburnt Country was released with Karma on the album Places in Between in 2004. Let's hear it. <laughs> Kids growing up out in the outback Most times we would lose track of time Sometimes we would go down by the river Down to our secret favorite swimming home We didn't have much but we did the best we can Make things from what could find Sometimes things didn't go as planned Life on the land was tough but oh so fine Ooh, I love my sunburn country Ooh, I love the thrill of this outback life Every night we would sit and look at the stars and say it's when I feel that northern wind in my face I love my sunburn country Yes, that was Warren with his song, Sunburg Country. Next up, we've got the North Tanamine Band with their song, Kura. North Tanamine Band hailed from Lajamanu, 900 k's north of Alice Springs, and was one of the pioneer bands of the desert reggae sound. North Tanamine Band has been hugely influential for the current generation of central desert bands. 
And in 2014, they performed at Roper Festival in Nooka, at the Desert Harmony Festival in Tennant Creek, and were one of the men specially selected to take part in Bush Band's business and performed at Bush Band's Bash in Alice Springs. Kuro was released with Karma on the album Desert People in 2008. Yes, that was the North Tanaman band with their song Krita. The last track we got is Come On by Jonathan Doolin and the Aranga Band, released with Karma on the EP Jonathan Doolin and the Aranga Band in 2019. Let's have a listen.
Yes, that was Come On by Jonathan Doolin and the Aranga Band. That's it for the Come On Music Show this week. Thanks to Paul Archie for coming in for a chat and playing for us. Make sure to tune in next week for plenty more Come On Music. Same time, same place. Bang. The Karma Music Show. Oh, yeah. The Karma Music Show is produced, recorded, edited, and mixed by Lloyd Barrett and Brenton Woods. Presented by Charlotte Monkland and Brenton Woods.